Hey, what up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you, and uh, it's pretty funny. I went on WWE.com today, and they're continuing on their storyline from last night with Stephanie McMahon being arrested. If you can remember and you go back in time, uh, there was a time when the WWE stock actually dropped because they ran an angle that Vince McMahon had sold uh, the WWE to Donald Trump, and people actually in the world had thought Donald Trump was actually taking over the WWE, not looking at it as if it was a wrestling angle, and WWE actually had to release a uh, press release uh, to everybody notifying them that Vince McMahon and Linda McMahon were still in charge of WWE. Just for a short time period, uh, uh, Donald Trump was going to be the on-air personality running Monday Night Raw. Basically, the, 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 the people in the world did not believe this storyline to, to not be true. Uh, they really thought that Vince was selling out and they were selling the stock and it was dropping in a rate that they had to kill off the angle within one week uh, where Vince bought the company back for a dollar and um, I just we never really got to see what was going on. I remember there was real thoughts of Vince McMahon really being dead when the limo blew up and so it, it's sort of funny that WWE.com would be, sort of be Pressing this story out that Stephanie McMahon really was arrested for battery, seeing how Stephanie uh, is a high up official in WWE. She has some sort of uh, new title um, that I, I can't remember what it was. I know she's the head of the WWE Moms Division, uh, where they try to get moms involved in their kids watching wrestling and things like that. They have sort of like a, I would say, just like a motivational group for them, but. Uh, um, you know, it, from what I've seen when I've actually went over to their Facebook page and their Twitter account is it seems like they really are just trying to help moms get involved with, with wrestling when their kids are. Because I know as being a wrestling fan, uh, uh, there's uh, my cousin who I took to an, uh, an event last uh when we go, we went to Stockton in December. Uh, his mom has has no idea, but but he is just a diehard wrestling fan. Um, he watches the network continuously. He watches uh, Raw. He watches Main Event. He watches SmackDown. He was a big fan of Saturday Morning Slam. He was upset when that was gone. I'm sure that he had DVRs, Saturday Morning Slam, and things like that. He's just just really big into it. And for them to be pressing this storyline to be like it's a real storyline, that I think that it is honestly uh, pretty cool. Even though it's it, it's pretty funny, where they just pretty much have wrote this fake story saying that Stephanie McMahon was finally released from the Miami uh, Police Department after being processed and booked. Uh, she was released at 4 a.m. Triple H took all the way until 1 a.m. in order to be there. So more than likely, I can see some uh, strife between the two of them. I'm sure Stephanie is going to be very embarrassed uh, on Monday when Raw comes around. I'm sure they'll keep her off of SmackDown saying that she's not going to speak to the uh, the media and she, nothing uh, nothing more will be processed from Stephanie Mann probably until Raw when she's actually out there, you know, saying that she was an emotional wreck uh, and she was juggling and, and, you know, anger and embarrassment, humility and uh, self-pity is how the story goes. But I can see her being upset with Triple H as well, seeing how he took his time to get down there. He was going to be uh, leaving uh, the arena trying to, to get down and pick her up as fast as he could before Joey Mercury stopped him and said, well, just tell us who the number one contender is. And he had to remember that he did promise that he was going to make a big... Uh, uh, you know, a big moment, you know, for the WWE Universe out there. Uh, of course, as you saw, when he actually did go out there at the end of the show, it seemed that he didn't even know what he was going to say. It seemed that if Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar talked him into, into making this decision, uh, it doesn't seem that Roman Reigns, Kane, or uh, Randy Orton had his vote of confidence at the time. And, of course, uh, Cesaro wasn't able to beat Dean Ambrose, so he wasn't going to be getting the vote of confidence at that time either. Uh, Seth Rollins, of course, uh, right now is more than likely probably just a little bit too too fresh, and he has the money in the bank anytime, so more than likely he could be coming to save the day at the end of Summer, SummerSlam regardless. It would be pretty cool if anybody ever used the gimmick where basically, you know, they have the money in the bank briefcase, but they have a match. They lose the match, but it's it's one of those things. Maybe you don't actually have him lose by disqualification. Maybe you just have him lose, like, in a normal fashion where he just fucks up and he gets beat. 
But then, you know, after the match, he destroys the guy, hits him with a briefcase a few times, then he cashes in the briefcase, and boom, one, two, three. You might have lost the main match, the main event of the pay-per-view, but boom, you're the champion. I mean, I don't know. That that seems like something that'd be cool to me, how they never come along that way. I'm not sure, but they always like that surprise fashion where you're seeing two dudes work a whole angle, and then at the end of it, uh, you have somebody cashing in that's not even a part of it and taking the title off. That's that's one of the funny uh, funnest things about having the money in the bank briefcase is that it, at any time somebody can be coming down and cashing in and becoming the new champion. So that's it. Peace out, everybody. Watch out, Triple H. Should have been down there earlier.